And many Christians, some of you are watching me right now, you are mad. You're getting angry. You're getting waked up. Because I am saying that I don't believe in a white Jesus with blue eyes. No, you cannot say that. You are denying Jesus. Why did you allow the white people to make a white idol and you never complained? Now I'm saying it, you are getting angry. Why are you angry? You are not angry with me. You are angry with yourself. That you have been lied to for a long time. And for the first time, you meet information on your face. And it's causing lots of what we call here psychological misunderstanding, cognitive dissonance in a more professional psychological language. It's your own conflict in your own mind with your own belief system. Decolonize God. Number two, decolonize humanity. We cannot be taken only as Africans who don't have a soul. We are Africans. We are al -Kablam. We are Bantu. And for this reason, when they tell us that you are slaves, you are less than nothing. Africans are animals. Africans are this. Africans are this. This dehumanizes us. And if we are to use the Bible as a text, it says we are created in the image of God. And if therefore we are animals, then God is an animal also. If we are stupid, then God is stupid also. And if we are less than human, then God is also less than human. Because what we say, we are in the image of the one who created us. Then we look like the one who has created us. And he who insults me, insults the one who has created me and has made me to be what I am. Therefore, an African must also have permission to identify with a God that looks like him. Yes, Buddhas in China, they can talk to their own Buddha. And... Uh, <laughs> The white people can create their own messiah also, that blue-eyed boy, and hang them around. That's for them. Yes. So what's wrong? <laughs> if he's an African, and if it does not matter whether Jesus is black or white, then can we please have a Chinese one? Can we please have an Indian god also? Because it does not matter. Then all of a sudden, no, no, we cannot make him anything except white. Then you are giving white people an unnecessary privilege to terrorize the rest of us with their white concept of superiority, which translates itself into politics. We shall conclude there. Then thirdly, we need to decolonize and deconstruct the Messiah, the whole picture of Jesus. If you have a Jesus in your house, a white picture of a Jesus in your house, please burn it. That's a demon that is in your house. If you have a book that has a white picture of a white Jesus on it, please burn that book. Those are white demons. If you have a small little cross on your neck that is hanging with a white Jesus on it, that small little blue-eyed boy, burn it. That is a demon you are carrying in yourself. And we cannot as black people be calling on white demons to oppress us and evoking them, calling these white spirits to come and have superiority over us. The true God of the Bible was not a white man. Madagascar is 100 and something, 200 kilometers away from Africa. It's part of Africa. Yet North Africa, which is Israel, is separated by the Suez Canal and is not part of Africa. And this canal was dug a few days ago. Are, are, you, are you okay in your head? We are on the same platonic stone, Africa and Middle East. And God created a garden east of Eden. Therefore, Africa is Eden. We need to decolonize this Jesus story and throw away a white Jesus with his idols, with his, we do, I don't believe in a white movie star from Hollywood who is, who is supposed to have come around and saved me from my sins. How can a white boy with blue eyes die for Africans when they cannot even share land with us? Show me one white man who has died for a black man. Show me one white man. 25 million people dead in the sea on their way to America, to America for slavery. 15 million people dead in Congo. 25 plus 15, 40 million plus people dead. And all their blood means nothing except the blood of a white boy. If you are going to do theology, do it correctly. Do it correctly and give me an option. If I want to believe in a white Jesus, I'll believe in a white Jesus. If I want to believe in a black Jesus, I'll believe in a black Jesus. But if you want to be true to the biblical text, then be honest as theologians. And I'm embarrassed to be sitting here as a theologian together with some of my theological friends who have gone to school to study. And when you come out of school to study, we actually continue to promote the wrong theology and push it in front of our own people. We have become the colonizers ourselves. Uncle Tom's who are sitting on the conscience of our people. 
which is wrong. Which is wrong. How do you sleep at night taking money from widows and orphans? How do you sleep at night taking money from people who cannot afford food and bread because Jesus will bless them? For the past 15 years they've been giving their offerings to you and their lives have not changed. What is the problem? Because you don't have faith. You don't have faith. When I'm fundis, do you have faith in collecting money from us? So we need to understand and deconstruct the whole picture and ideology of this white messiah. And as long as we worship a white messiah, my submission to you is that we are not worshiping the truth of the text. This is an academic exercise we're doing here. If you want to be true to the text, please, I bought a can of Coke. Can I drink the Coke? Can I drink the Coke? Don't tell me, just drink, just drink as long as you are drinking. Uh-uh. I said I want Coke. Therefore, remove the unnecessary iconography. And when you get more academic and you study the Kemetic religion to find that issues of the Trinity, the mother and son, the tree, all these things are actually way found in Kemet before even the Bible was written. And the Kemetic history is older than the Bible. Then I leave to you who are academicians. Since Jesus grew up in Egypt, who, when he came back to teach them after 12 years, from which school was he coming from and who had taught him? That's for you who are more, more, more advanced in your spaces of study to now to do a comparative study between the biblical text and Kemetic text and see the similarities and authenticate which one is older than the other. Then position your theology correctly. That's what life is all about. And ultimately, when you come, when you come there, you, decol you decolonize God, decolonize humanity, decolonize the Messiah, decolonize salvation. Stop selling, stop selling religion. Stop selling hope to the people. Give people practical solutions. Buy farms. How do you buy a factory and then convert it into a church and people come inside and they're praying for employment? <laughs> buy the factory. Create jobs. Then from the money from the factory, you can build a church. That's common sense. We need to deconstruct, decolonize the church. And we stop being centers, centers of embarrassment, centers of shame, centers of debauchery, centers of mischief, centers of licentiousness, centers of witchcraft, centers of perjury, and centers of corruption in the name of religion. And you don't want it to be spoken about, by the way. Ministers get very touchy. They get very touchy. They don't want it to be spoken about because you are bringing the body of Christ into disarray. There's no body of Christ that is so rotten and evil like this. We need to fix these things as Africans because Christianity has become a partner of colonialism. I'll say it again. Christianity has become a partner of colonialism. Why am I saying that? Because after colonizing, colonizing us, they were drinking coffee together. They never stood to oppose colonialism. They were benefiting from it. All your cities here have churches that are standing. The church right now in Africa owns more land than many businesses. Because they were in harmony with the government. May we have some land, please? They were given land. May we have some land? They were given land. Did they even condemn that what they were doing was wrong? The church was benefiting. Even now, there are churches that are still benefiting from colonialism. I'm not ashamed to say this. Even the church that I come from, my own church, is still running on the lines of segregation. Whites worship alone, blacks worship alone. We cannot even unite because of racism. The racism, is it biblical? No, it's not biblical. But the church will not stop it because it is founded on the principles of racism and segregation. And now all of a sudden, some other white man from Europe wants to come and run, and run a seminar in Britain of how we must manage racism. How can a racist come and teach us how not to become racist? How can a colonizer come and tell us how to decolonize ourselves? How do you have a conversation with yourself as an abuser of the system? Now you want to come and tell people how to manage and tolerate abuse. How can you be so narcissistic as an organization that you become so insensitive to the needs of the people that it is a conversation by yourself? You colonize the black people. You abuse the black people. You come around a few days later. You want to help the black people to tolerate and manage the colonialism that you gave to them. Are you okay in your head? When you finish abusing a person, when a person is abused, the most horrible thing you can do after raping someone is, oh, let me help you to clean up. Please, leave me alone. You've done what you, want to, what you wanted to do. Can you just get away from here? Let me find love and comfort from people that care for me. And I'll clean up my wounds. And when I am finally clean, 
and I come back to you and I want to deal with you. You did what you wanted to do and you walked away. When I come back and I do to you what I want to do, you don't have the right of telling me what to do and what not to do. This is where colonialism and politics fail to understand. The colonialist came here. The oppressor came here. They took land, raped the women, destroyed the infrastructure, destroyed our culture and everything else. Then they give you a democratic system with a constitution to help you to manage how to repair yourselves. We cannot tolerate that. You have done what you want to do as Europeans. Step aside. Allow us as black people to decide what we want to do with you. You can't be an abuser and be a judge of the same abuse again. Does this make sense, good people? Maybe I'm losing my mind, people. Help me here. Does it make sense? I'm a recovering abused child of Christianity. I'm recovering from the white nonsense.